So. So. Arcane. Arcane. I have finished it. You've finished all nine episodes. And I'm going to tell you what I think after the food heist. After the food heist. How yeah. do you know there's a food heist? Because you told me before I we did. started I the told podcast. You there was a food heist. <laughs> there was a food heist. Am I supposed to keep that secret? No, mm. you're not. I just, um, our, our listeners mm-hmm. love the food heist so much. I like to keep them in suspense because I'm cruel. So this one's great. Okay. Okay. This is um, Bacardi. The maker of French brandy. Okay. Specifically, in this case, cognac. Okay. Uh, they loaded 24 pallets of cognac onto an American Airlines flight. Okay. And in, in France somewhere to fly it here to this U.S. Okay. And when it landed, six of those pallets were missing. Ooh, a midair Cognac Possibly, heist. right? So That's this is either cool. it mm-hmm. was stolen in midair yeah. or it was stolen during the loading process. Which is probably what which happened. Which is probably what happened. But it's not as cool, so we'll pretend. We're, we're going to pretend. Uh, or it was st- it was just accidentally left off and they're idiots. So um, Bacardi is suing American Airlines, not necessarily because they're accusing them of the heist, but right. this was under your care mm-hmm. when the pallets disappeared. Uh, six pallets of cognac apparently cost about $65,820. And uh, I think that's just super exciting. First of all, Cognac makes it sound a little James Bondy already, yes. right? Yeah. Slightly classy European mm-hmm. liquor. Uh, and then it goes dis- it, it goes missing mid-air. There's like a DB Cooper who's That's like so cool. parachuting little bottles of cognac one at a time out a window. <laughs> and then I don't know, follows somehow. I feel yeah. like there's a, a bad movie based off yeah. of Con Air. Uh-huh. <laughs> Starring Nicholas Act Cage. Act one of the movies, he goes to like those little toy machines at like mm-hmm. the dentist where you put in a quarter and you get a little yeah. plastic army man with a plastic parachute and he buys like 500 of those. What are you up to? Oh, it's nothing. Birthday I party. I have a lot of kids at home. Yeah. Um, I'm inviting Dan's kids over and there's so many of them. Depending on the quantum state, there could be an infinite number an, of them. So An infinite number. Uh, is cognac a food? Is cognac a food? Yes. I think it's a soup. Does it have things floating in it? There's nothing in it? floating in it. it if is, there's nothing floating in it, we could still classify it as a broth. But that feels like we're just ooh. in the lawless wastes now. Yes. <laughs> you think it's a food? Do I think yeah. it's a food? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. 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 I, th- I would agree. Yeah. I would agree that so... That, that alcohols are foods, right? Mm-hmm. Is cocaine a food? Is cocaine a food? <laughs> Boy, I'm, I'm going to assume you're making the worst food pyramid ever. <laughs> B-Money's four food groups, cognac, cocaine, and two other things that start with C. Salt. Oh, starts with the C. <laughs> uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> if... if Cocaine and salt are in two different food groups, and you have yes. two powder-based ones. You yeah. need like one, like two liquid-based ones. Yeah. Then, mm-hmm. what would be the fourth one? Then, I don't know. Blood. I'm a vampire. Blood. Yes. You know. Yeah. Okay. Be money's a vampire. So, is yeah. popcorn part of the salt group? Yeah. It's 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 a conveyance for the salt. Okay. Sometimes you get tired of plain v- old salt. A, so, yeah. is popcorn a utensil? Yeah. Popcorn's a utensil. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I could. I, I couldn't. I'm like. It's cocaine a food? It's marijuana a food? Um, I mean, I suppose technically you are ingesting those things, now, are but you they don't really calories? go into your stomach, right? I mean, they go into your bloodstream or your lungs or something else. And so I'm going to say not foods. Okay, so the alcohol part of cognac is not a food, but it is suspended in a food. Yeah. So that's, what, that's what you're going with? Well, so, I mean, yeah. the alcohol itself might also be a food. Okay. Uh, but you do ingest it into your digestive system. Uh-huh. Therefore, it is a food. So the cocaine that is wrapped in something to get it through your digestive system is then a food. Yes. Only if it breaks. When you swallow it <laughs> in like the balloon, yes. it's a food until such time as you excrete it, at which point it enters a different phase of its life cycle. Okay. In which it is no longer a food, it is an inhalant. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, I think we went too far on that. Um, that, 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 was, that, was like, that was like seven steps too far. I apologize yeah. Yeah. to every recovering alcoholic and or yes. drug addict that mm-hmm. we just triggered. Yeah. Um, it's especially funny because neither you or I drink alcohol or do drugs of any kind. So nope. Depends on if you count Claritin. Because <laughs> I pound that Claritin. Claritin is absolutely yeah. my uh, anti-allergy mm-hmm. medication of choice. It is mine as well. Zyrtec does nothing for me. Mm. And Benadryl... I mean, you can't be falling asleep while no. you're writing books. I, I got to so. be able yeah. to think. All right, Arcane. Arcane. So, Arcane, mm-hmm. um, what are, what are you... Bleh. Where did I land? L- let's get the final mm-hmm. I- ideas first, yeah. Where did I land? Yeah. Arcane is a masterpiece. Really? Yep. Um, what, what, what brought it up from I kind of like this in the middle three to masterpiece at the end? Um, a couple of realizations. Okay. Uh, one was being able to better having a uh, number. Well, one was the visual styling, styling and music of the last three episodes was excellent. Yeah. Uh, and really some of the best. stepped up from the yeah. middle three. Absolutely. Um, but part of it was being able to take Jinx and better contextualize her in the story they're telling mm-hmm. so that the things about Jinx that bother me, bother me less. I'm still bothered by the uh, thing that you brought up, right? This idea that someone who has mental trauma becomes uh, neurodivergent, therefore commits crimes and shoots people with no conscience. Mm -hmm. This connection bothers me, but I made kind of a revelation as I was watching the last three episodes that Arcane is grimdark. Yeah, definitely. Uh, And when it clicked that this was grimdark and that everybody's lives was going to be messed up to supreme amounts, and that's part of the story. Mm-hmm. Jinx fell into context with the rest of the grimdark that was happening, and I'm like, I, it's uh, grimdark is generally a little exaggerated, yeah, uh, on purpose. Um, even in hand in hand with its grittiness, it is exaggerating certain things, and I can accept Jinx as an exaggerated character in the same way I can accept the exaggeration of this world, and it all kind of clicked together to the point that at the end I'm like, this was a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can critique anything I would change. You could make a version of this that was better targeted at me. Okay. Because grimdark is not my favorite thing in the world, mm-hmm. but what they were doing, they achieved spectacularly. And at the end, I'm like, I have to agree that this is a masterpiece. So. Okay, I, I want to ask more questions, but mm-hmm. first, uh, I'm going to address the mental health thing one more yes. time, and then we'll get over it, and yes. and you don't have to listen to us talk about it anymore. I do not think that Arcane is specifically saying. Mm-hmm. Look, Jinx is violent because of her mental issues. Mm-hmm. I don't think that they have crossed that line. Um, and and we did get a lot of comments last time saying, hey, that's not what it was about. That's not what it's about. You're absolutely right. But it is part of the ongoing pattern in which people with, you know, neurodivergent mm-hmm. mental health issues are overwhelmingly depicted as violent, even though that is not true in real life. And so whether they connected those dots or not, it is just part of, in my opinion, a harmful pattern. Well, and I think that I would go one step further than you. Okay. I would go one step further uh, in saying that depicting Jinx as not being able to tell right from wrong because of her mental illness is the way that it's depicted for me. Okay. She knew right from wrong when she was young. She no longer knows right from wrong. She will kill people mercilessly and not even recognize what she is doing. Um, That like when at the end she shoots her father figure, Mm -hmm. it is presented as an outgrowth of her mental illness, shooting him. She can't control herself. She's immediately regretful. She immediately says, what have I done? That's true. She goes and she hugs him. Because of her mental illness, she killed someone that she loved. See, I read that more Mm -hmm. as... She was forced in a split second to choose between her father figure and her sister, and she chose the sister. Yes, and then regretted it. And then immediately regretted it. Yeah. Um, That is another valid read. Yeah. And the thing about this is I I have mostly backed off on this in my my thinking of it. It Mm -hmm. was bothering me more in the beginning. Uh, The nature of talking about something means that we will 
pick at quibbles. Yeah. Um, and this is still like one of my quibbles with uh, Arcane. Mm -hmm. But there's something that someone who does not write Grimdark has to acknowledge about Grimdark, which is the inherent morality of Grimdark. So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, one of the, 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 the coolest aspects of Grimdark, if you're not familiar with Grimdark, we talked about it on a previous episode, but I'll, I'll talk about how I'm defining it here. Grimdark is where a story where good acts are consistently punished, right? Mm -hmm. If someone makes a good, what we would consider a good moral um, decision, they will be punished for it by the narrative, Yeah. right? Uh, when Echo decides, all right, I'll go with you and do the thing, the end result is people getting killed and he, sh you know, the, the narrative punishing his moral decision. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when um, Man of Industry, Jace, gets everybody together to finally decide it to give the lower city what it wants in independence, the end result is one of the people from the lower city launches a rocket through their window. Yeah. Right? Um, this is a narrative storytelling style mm -hmm. um, where morality is punished. Yeah. But and, that and, does not make it immoral. And and to be clear, yes. um you are not saying that the story draw drew any causative links between those things. No. I it's am not. just the world in which the story exists is a world in which bad things happen to good people. Not just bad things happen to good people, they inevitable. Yeah. Um there is not a good decision in Arcane that isn't punished. Can you find one? Let me think. I don't know. Now, you can have Grimdark that doesn't go to every single instance, but this is, it's a world where everything is messed up. Mm -hmm. And another kind of aspect of Grimdark is lots of shades of gray. Yeah. Uh, lots of depictions of characters who have, uh, uh, are, nobody is wholly good, nobody is wholly evil, people are people. Um, and the reason I say that punishing morality is not actually immoral is because that's actually very realistic. People yeah. like to point at Grimdark and say it's realistic. Um, this is like if you, Dan Wells, are in a situation where you could steal something very valuable and there would be no consequences and you knew there would be no consequences in it ever, mm -hmm. you still probably wouldn't take it. Probably not. Um, and therefore you are, you are giving up something. Morality requires giving up mm -hmm. something that you would want um, for a greater good that you believe in. Yeah. And so punishing these decisions actually is just an exaggeration of what happens every day. What uh, you are saying is it's still better to make the right decision, even if that punishment is a likely outcome, mm -hmm. because morality is not based on pure, I get a reward like a puppy when you ring yeah. a bell salivating, right? Mm -hmm. That is not true morality. And so a story like Arcane it can be saying, look, you should be making these good decisions. They are presented as good. When Echo yeah. goes with them, it is presented as the right choice mm -hmm. in the narrative. And I would agree with it. Yeah. It goes really poorly. Mm -hmm. That's the risk you take by making the good decision. And you have to be fully aware that you can make the right choice and be punished anyway. That doesn't make the choice the wrong choice. Yeah. So Agreed. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Well, let me ask you about some of the, uh, the characters in it. Yes. Uh, because we talk a lot about Jinx. Yep. Uh, we haven't talked much about Vi. Yes. Uh, and I actually loved Vi in this. What, yeah. what do you think of her character arc to the extent that she yeah. has one? I don't know if she does. Hers is not the strongest of the character arcs. Mm -hmm. Um, she's basically the same person throughout. I yes. will keep punching until good things happen. Right. Which... And they just they just keep not happening. The, the narrative punching is, is not a way. Saying, of, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought she was very well handled. Um, mm -hmm. Not everyone has to have a huge dramatic character arc. Uh, yeah. People can remain mostly the same, and the narrative can say things about that. Um, I thought she was just compelling enough as a like she's the one that we see most things through. Mm -hmm. She's the most quote unquote normal is the wrong term for it, but she's the most um, 
like she's as much of an outsider as we get in this story yeah. because she's been locked away and coming back to it. We get to enter the narrative through her eyes and uh, we empathize with most of what she's trying to achieve. Um, but yeah, I thought she was well handled. I mean, my biggest gripe is a really small one that they wanted her not in the story for 10 years or whatever through her in prison, which would have dramatic um, effect mm -hmm. on who she is. And she exits basically the same person, just a little extra angry. Yeah, definitely harder, yes. uh, a little more uh, mm -hmm. kind of angry at the world, like you said. Uh, okay, so what about Victor? Victor, I think, was my favorite character, or at least okay. the character who I found the most interesting. Uh, he was, you know, of the two yes. mad scientists, Yep, Jason Victor, he's the one that uh, I think goes on the more interesting journey throughout. He does. Um, and, you know, another grim, dark moment when the girl who's in love with him gets mm -hmm. vaporized. Yeah. Um, this is, this is. Because nothing good can ever happen to anyone. Uh, thank you for trying to help him when he's in danger. Here's your vaporization. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I thought he was really interesting. Uh, this is not a gripe with, um, with it. I don't know what's going on in the plot. Mm-hmm. Arcane is not about what's going on with the world building side of the plot, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, I know what's going on with the human side, the the human stories, mm -hmm. um, but I do not go like the 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 hex tech makes no sense. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know expect he expects to get out of it. Yeah, that's all okay mm -hmm. um, because that's not what the story is about. Um, and they wisely did not make the ending hinge on you understanding any of that. So it's yeah. not a Brandon Sanderson style. Um, a fantasy story. This is um a different style. This is yeah. a this is a grim dark. Um, this is more George R. R. Martin than Brandon Sanderson. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean that as praise. Yeah. Right? Uh, not that what I do is not great, but but there's the different storytelling there's styles. There's lots of different uh, storytelling styles. There, there's lots of different people. And um, so Victor was really interesting because he was very on that. He was like a really realistic take on a mad scientist working with unknowable magic that you don't know what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I liked how, you know, he had the best line in the series. It was him, right? It's like the the whole, um, we, we were so trying so hard to become great, we forgot to be good. Was that yeah. him or was that Jace? I'm pretty sure that was him. Yeah. Because uh, he was Jace's conscience, essentially. Yeah. Um, and best line in the, in the show. Um, mm -hmm. And... He was doing interesting things, and he kept getting forgotten by Jace, who is, you know, built like an underwear model, yet somehow still <laughs> a, um, a a giant a hole. Ah, I did not like Jace very much. I, I can understand all the decisions he made, mm -hmm. even though I disagreed with them. I like Jace a lot, really. Yeah, um, because it was it was presenting what. I haven't played the game, mm -hmm. but I imagine the game presents Jace as Superman. Right? Pretty much, yeah. Um, that Jace He's got that giant hammer. Is this ar archetypal superhero, and this presented him as a pawn consistently getting manipulated, trying to not get manipulated and find a way out, but having being too inexperienced in the realm that he has found himself to actually achieve it, mm -hmm. which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, now, th before we totally leave Victor, mm -hmm. I I'm really interested to know what you thought about his overall journey because mm -hmm. you have not played the game. I have uh, not. In the game, mm -hmm. uh, Victor is actually many stages more deep deeper into into the mad science yeah. like uh there's a scene early on when they're showing off to heimerdinger look mm -hmm. at all the stuff that our cool hex tech can do mm -hmm. uh and there's like this big shoulder laser that yeah. can carve stuff he has that and okay. he's got a big mask because he's horribly disfigured um and so i and my friends that were watching it with me mm -hmm. we kind of spent that whole final three episodes waiting for the transformation that never came. Yeah. You were not expecting that. I was that. not expecting that. And so how, like, were were you satisfied with what they did with him as a character and where they left him at the end? Yes, because you, as you mentioned, he is Jace's conscience. Mm -hmm. And by the end, the conscience is corrupted, right? Yeah. That's what I read from it, that he is delving into this dangerous stuff, um, punctuated by someone he should have loved getting vaporized. Mm -hmm. Um 
and him broken by both mentally and physically by all the things happening to him and having had to make this decision or else he would die. Yeah, uh, he's a very, very Elric sort of character. And so mm-hmm. basically the conscience has been corrupted, right? He Absolutely. Is, he can no longer be the conscience. He can no longer be the moral center, despite having that great line. And that was his journey for me. Yeah. Um, for for me, it, it felt a little unsatisfying because mm-hmm. it felt like they got him right up to that final step and then didn't let him take it. And I assume that that's planned for a future season. We do see him thoroughly broken down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, past the point of contemplating suicide, yeah. where he ends up down in the caves talking to Silco's evil mad scientist and saying, you're the only one left who can help me. So right. you're right. That's absolutely his full moral corruption. Right. And I was just like, okay, well then give him the mask and the thing, See, please. I don't think we need it because if you start the next season and he has it, the corruption, that, the breaking point was the important one. Mm-hmm. Not putting on the mask. You're right. Um, and so I fully expect to come back and he's like, I'm expecting him to turn all into glowing blue stuff. Um, that's, you know, that's what I, I thought he would be mm, transformed. That he would into turn into an energy being of some kind? Yeah, because his leg and his arm are energy being things. Mm-hmm. I just assumed he'd be whatever that is, made out of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and that we'd come back and it's like, what happened to Victor? Well, he didn't want to die. He went forward anyway. Mm-hmm. Um you saw his fall, even from the, it was good to show the child's perspective where he was mm-hmm. horrified by what this guy was doing and coming back to being the person who was doing it. So Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you had the reins of season two, mm-hmm. would you start Victor in that place yeah. or would you show him No, no, I would jump, that? I would jump a year to, or two, maybe as long as five. Mm-hmm. Uh, war has been going on between these two factions, um, the, 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 the two cities. Um, you know, Jace has to survive um, the rocket. Everybody else in that room is dead. He is now an emperor because um, he's given up on democracy. Mm-hmm. Um, he is fully broken down by that. Um, and there is a war being waged between these two and Victor's on the other side, probably. So you start him mm-hmm. kind of embracing the side of him that yeah. went berserk with the hammer yep. down in that factory. Well, he's still going to claim. He's going to claim he's not that person. Okay. Right? He's mm-hmm. he's he's going to say he's not and he's he that he's a defender and things like this. But it's been a 5-year war and then the second season would be about an external threat. Yeah. Um well, which I I think that they were leading toward and, and yes. for me the mm-hmm. the one subplot that worked the least effectively mm-hmm. is uh, the one kind of council member, and I can't remember her name because she's not a character in the game, right. but the one that Jace falls in love with. Right, and her um, mom. Her mom shows up mm-hmm. out of nowhere, and it, 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 I didn't feel like that was handled very well, but it did feel very much like we're not going to spend a lot of time on her. She's just to let you know that there's a yeah. bigger enemy out there that can show up in a future season. I mean, I will be very... Sad if she doesn't survive, bomb through the window. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I would agree with you to an extent. I thought her mother was a really interesting character. Uh, and so I liked having her in the show. Um, and I liked particularly that, again, this gave us the shades of gray. Um, now, her character, the councilwoman's character, is one of the ones that was a little erratic because she was mm-hmm. um, tr- like, there's, there's two things in Arcane that I couldn't quite get a handle on one is what is her deal right <laughs> like yeah what does she want because last three episodes it is i do not want war i left the war mongering people i came here and built something i want to preserve it mm-hmm. early it was manipulating jace and i can see the con the way those two should connect and i think there's maybe just one piece that i would have added yeah. uh to to connect them the other is heimerdinger i do not get heimerdinger <laughs> um not just as a as a Disney character mm-hmm. in a George Martin book, um, right? Not just that, um, but I don't know what the creators want me to feel about him because all through the first three, he's like, this is dangerous. You shouldn't be doing this. And he is explicitly wrong. 
right? <laughs> yeah. He is actively wrong. And so when we come back for the next three episodes where he gets votes, voted as a council, it is framed narratively as Jace is doing this terrible thing. Mm -hmm. But Heimerdinger is saying the same things. This is dangerous. You shouldn't be doing this that he said before. And the narrative proved him wrong. It's proved the narrative proves Heimerdinger wrong every chance it can to the point that when he gets voided out, I'm like, yeah, this is what they should be doing. Show mm -hmm. you're framing it like I should be feeling upset. And I can't tell if you want me to be actually upset or if that's just like, I don't know what's up with him. Yeah. And the frankly, I don't think the show did either. Mm -hmm. They're either having a big plan for season two or, yes. in my opinion, more likely, he's canonically part of that city and that university and they needed to put him into the story. Mm -hmm. And so they gave him something to do for a few episodes and then essentially wrote him out of the story. He's just kind of chilling with Echo's people for several episodes doing nothing. Now, it would be, and if that's the case, I would have made an argument, and I could be wrong here, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're doing a different style of storytelling than I do. Yeah. That I would argue that first three episodes he should have gotten something right something important right so that we are saying okay heimer dinger is smart and wise and going without him as your actual kind of moral compass for the city mm -hmm. is dangerous road to go down see and i think that's what they thought they were doing yeah without actually laying the groundwork for it because there is very much a sense of Heimerdinger's out. Yes. Jace is running the show now. Mm -hmm. The city is this wonderful veneer of right. magitech awesomeness that's all just lipstick on a pig because everything's going to collapse. Right. I think that's what they thought they were doing. But it was that way when Heimerdinger was running it. Yeah. And in the first three episodes, Heimerdinger's like, don't do this. Yeah. This is bad. After the three episodes, look at the cool... And it, it, it Heimerdinger mm -hmm. sounds like someone saying, don't turn on the electricity because electric wires overhead will kill you. Yeah. Like they, some don't, people don't ride a train because humans are not meant to go more than 20 miles yes. an hour. And it really made him seem like he actually doesn't know science mm -hmm. at all, which is yeah. bad if you want me to be worried that he's no longer in charge. And so therefore... Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think that that was, hand it was not handled well. Uh, well, and let's go back to what's her name. And again, mm -hmm. I feel really bad that I can't Will remember her name. Will you look up the character name for us? Um, she was my favorite character in the show mm -hmm. for a couple of episodes because of what you said. She was manipulating Jace. Mm -hmm. She was very clearly, in my opinion, leading him toward something. And then we got to the scene where they slept together, and I mm -hmm. thought, oh, Jace, you just fell into this trap, at which point she, her character did a 180 turn. Yes. All of the Machiavellian stuff disappeared mm -hmm. overnight. Um, she basically turned into a background character who was no longer driving any action. Uh, she lost all of her agency. She lost all of her plot momentum, and you're right, we, we don't know what she wanted out of the story. And it may be that none of that early stuff was actually manipulation. It was just she was, she was in love felt. with Jace yeah. and it was all sincere. Um, but yeah, she stopped being interesting really fast. And then again, as with uh, some of the other characters, I genuinely don't think they knew what to do with her in those final three episodes. Yeah, there was a lot to cram into those episodes. Um, and uh, we we are giving quill, quibbles, mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about Silco. Yeah. Because I thought Silco was great. Silco was a really good character. Mm -hmm. um, I have serious concerns about all the people that were shipping him and Jinx. Yes. Uh, but That's Silco, wrong. as a villain, yes. he was fascinating. He was yeah. competent. Uh, he was... Flawed. He was very flawed mm -hmm. while also having generally good goals. He was mm -hmm. trying to help the people. He was trying to help the people in a very self-serving way yep. using evil methods, but he did have a good goal and he was fighting on what we might term the right side of that conflict yeah. in terms of the dystopia that they presented. I thought Silco was fantastic. 
Well, in so many characters um, who are in that role are just supernaturally able to make their plans come together for no good reason. Right. <laughs> yeah. And this is a this is a challenge we have as writers. Uh, the Dark Knight's one of my favorite uh, favorite films, but the things that Joker is able to get away with, where you ha you step back and say, "Wait a minute, how did he actually plan for this? Mm -hmm. These four coincidences needed to happen for this to actually work. This should not have worked." And yeah. Silco, I felt rode that line. He felt really smart. He was, but he was adapting to the situation in smart ways, and he had plans, but sometimes they got upended. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he came off as a realistic evil genius yeah. rather than I'm just supernaturally good at doing things I shouldn't be able to. So so let's talk about how they did that because mm -hmm. I, I agree with you completely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think some I, I think he's very instructive as a character because yeah. he's so well constructed. Uh, a lot of these kind of evil genius masterminds, we don't see the actual planning mm -hmm. going on. Yep. And with Silco, they always showed him as the string puller, as the puppet master. He was surrounded by countless, you know, servants and flunkies and tools mm -hmm. that he would send out to, I need you to go do this thing. And we saw him in several meetings where he was, you know, setting up his plans. I need you to yeah. do this for this reason. The, the reasons it worked for me. Mm -hmm. So is all of that. We see him setting up the plans. We see him reacting and fixing the plan when things go wrong. And he did not have to be supernaturally good. Like it's those, those uh, coincidences that mm -hmm. have to fall the bad guy's way that make this not work. He did not have to be supernaturally good in order to get his right-hand lieutenant to know that she was loyal and be able to trust her to come to him when she got the offer and then to let it play out. And there's mm -hmm. a moment right after, and this is the, the important stuff where he's like, were you ever tempted? Where we see that he didn't 100% know. Yeah. He's not Lex Luthor at the end saying, aha, you've fallen into my convoluted trap where you did this, <laughs> this, this, this. Then this random thing happened and this random thing happened. And th together, it makes it so that what I wanted to have happen, happened. Yeah. Now, you can do that if you give people supernatural powers, mm -hmm. which, you know, I, I actually like some stories where it's like, this person can see the future. So therefore... How do you deal with the fact that they can see the future because they can supernaturally set up plans? But yeah. someone like Silco works really well in this sort of, you know, he's not sure. And yeah. he's going to be able to adapt when things go wrong. And things do go wrong. And you see that he's he's staying ahead of it, but just barely. And then when it he stops staying ahead of it, when Jinx, who has been the chink in his armor all along, goes off script and he's not able to manipulate her, he fails. And so his mm -hmm. doom is brought about by his human failing, and again, yeah. by his love of someone, his adopted yeah. daughter. You the know. one good thing that he does ends yes. up being the thing that destroys him at the yes. end. Uh, you know, and bringing up the, you know, his kind of head enforcer's loyalty, I think yes. is, a, is a key one, mm -hmm. because that is ultimately his superpower, is yes. to surround himself with capable people to treat them well and to give them what they want. He's yep. not the kind of bad guy who we see, you know, wantonly killing his own lieutenants right. when they, you know, fail him uh, because that's stupid. Like that's one of the main things on the evil overlord list, right? Is I will yep. not just kill my lieutenants every time they disagree with me. Um, he trusts them. He gives them a lot of latitude to do their own thing. And so he knows that when she gets into this situation, he is confident that he has already given her a better offer than anyone else could have given her. Yep, with just a little bit of a hint of worry. Yeah. Just a hint. Which is great. Now, uh -huh. I I didn't actually like that lieutenant's character very much. I thought she was interesting. I, I don't know. Like, she was interesting for a while, but especially when Vi's big final hero fight was against her, that felt very unsatisfying to me. I don't think she had been built up to the point where she was yeah. important um, enough to the story or to Vi to warrant that being the hero fight. You have to make decisions when you're making 
a story this long. And one of the things that goes wrong in this kind of story frequently is too many characters and too many arcs. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I don't know if the story would be improved by spending more time on her. But the way I think you could have done it is she's a representation of those who take the monster juice Mm -hmm. that killed Vi's um, uh, surrogate father, right? Uh, And if you build up that, if you take, you know, representation of the monster juice, she's our best representation of the monster juice after the first three episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, But you probably, if you want to make that fight better, you need her to be the person who's first taking the monster juice in the first three. Yeah. And becoming the big thing. And then later on, it's like, oh, she lost her arm, but now Monster Juice is in control. We've we've spent whatever, five years learning how to let you use Monster Juice to just be stronger and not. And so she's a new and improved version. And then you could build that to. Yeah. To I think thing. E- even if all they had done was mm-hmm. try to connect her visually to the father figure's death. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think she was even present when he died which hurts that arc yeah. a little bit. But yeah, that that could have sold it for me if we had seen from Vi's point of view that she was not fighting this random mm-hmm. lady. She was fighting the concept of monster this juice. horrible monster juice. Yes. Uh, then yes, that would have worked better for me. But as it was, I was like, wait, I don't like this character. Why is Vi's, <laughs> why is Vi's final triumph at the end just defeating this person who I have clearly yeah. not thought was as important as the story thinks she is. Yeah, the, the other thing could be is that she could be in charge of the prison. Yeah. Um, if she were, you know, in some way connected to that mm-hmm. uh, and the regular beatings that Vi got then. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, that's that fight was awesome. It was a really well done fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of though, let's talk about the uh, mind fight between mm-hmm. Jinx and Echo because that yeah it uh, was you had warned me it was coming it was a highlight of the the series yeah um it was really well done i i loved it was it it wasn't it was echo and jinx right yeah, yeah echo and jinx did yeah. i not say echo and uh, jinx you probably did i okay and but yeah um on the yeah. bridge mhm yep very good stuff um the use of music and visuals just was incredible uh, and so I am not surprised that uh, Riot has uh, purchased or bought some stake in the animation studio mm-hmm. that uh, made this, and they are working together on more things going forward. Yeah, uh, they did a really good job. Um, they really did. Um, let's let's segue. They're mm-hmm. f- talking about the animation studio. Yes, uh, Netflix has lately been having some trouble. Uh, they lost subscribers for the first time in years, mm-hmm. and their stock price dropped a bunch. Yes. They are still the largest streaming service by, mm-hmm. like, double anybody else. Uh, yes. Their revenues are actually up, so mm-hmm. all the doomsayers are wrong. Uh, but they have scaled back their animation significantly, in particular a lot of the prestige stuff. Like, they were working on an adaptation of Bone, and they're not doing that anymore. Oh, did they cancel that? They canceled Bone. That's sad. It's very sad. Bone would be great. Bone would be great. And I don't know who was doing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, The difference here, because a lot of people are worried that Netflix scaling back its animation is going to hit Arcane. It's not. They're not financing Arcane. Nope. Riot is doing that whole cloth, and then just as far using as Netflix know. to distribute it. Yes. As far as we know, you're right. Yeah. Uh, but we don't know, yes. no, not, we aren't privy to their deals, mm-hmm. um, but uh, my understanding from what people have said behind the scenes is Riot created this thing and then said, hey, Netflix, you're you're the biggest platform. Yeah. Uh, we want to get this to the most people possible. Uh, you don't get to have a say in anything. Here's your show. Here's a show. Mm-hmm. We spent a lot of money on it. Yep, 150 million by reports. Um, so mm-hmm. uh, it might be more than that. It might be less, but that's what uh, that's what people yeah. say. Um, Which is just over 15 million per episode yep. on average. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's a lot. Do you know how much Netflix spent on season four of Stranger Things? 30 million an episode. 30 million an episode. Yeah, that's unbelievable to me. It is, and it isn't. 
Um, a film costs uh, two hundred million to make mm-hmm. for ninety minutes, ninety to one hundred minutes of a big action blockbuster. Yeah. And so, if you are going to approach film budgets for something like Stranger Things, then you're still under that budget, right? Stranger Things is what eight episodes. Eight episodes. Eight. I guess forty-five I minute episodes. How, how many episodes it is? Ish would be my guess. Um, eight forty-five minutes. So it's still half the budget of a Marvel film. Is it? Yeah. I mean, eight times thirty, two hundred and forty million. Two hundred and forty million for for several several more hours for in that sense you are correct. The, uh, now, triple the triple the runtime. A lot so. of that cost mm-hmm. uh, is actors. Yep. I want to know which of those kids hmm. is commanding that kind of money to get them back on board for a season four. Mm-hmm. Hell, I assume. Well, yeah. And, um, yeah. And, and L and David Harbour. David Harbour. I don't know if the rest yeah. of them but are really. Regardless, I do think that, uh, it's not surprising to me, um, in that this is, this is what big budget cinema costs. And mm-hmm. so. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's let's get back to Arcane. Mm-hmm. Uh final thoughts. You think it's a masterpiece? Yes. Um, I guess the question everyone wants to know is right. is this the thing that's gonna make Brandon Sanderson break down and play League of Legends? Is everyone asking that? No, no one's asking no that. No one's asking like that. Like two people in the YouTube comments are going to ask that. So okay. you two people, here's your question. Uh obviously not. not, right? Because yeah. I would still need to play StarCraft 2 <laughs> before I would even... Well, and it, you're not a MOBA player. I'm not uh, a MOBA player. One thing that uh, Riot is also working on mm-hmm. is, and I can't remember whatever ridiculous name they have for it, but they're doing a League of Legends uh, fighting game, Street okay. Fighter style. Would you play that? I would, but I like single player experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it depends on how good a single player campaign is. I am not interested in multiplayer experiences, except as my children are interested in them and we can play together, particularly a Mm co-op. So I am interested in co-op FPSs that we can play together or similar sorts of things um, and whatnot. I am not interested in (laughs) non-campaign-based multiplayer, um, which is why I've never picked up any of these sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Um, League of Legends isn't the only one. All the MOBAs, but also all the FPSs that are big these days. My son loves to play all of them. Uh, mm-hmm. He plays the the League of Legends one. I'm trying to remember what it is. The um, uh, Valorant. Plays Valorant which a lot with his friends. It's Riot. It's not yeah. League of Legends. Oh, is it not the same characters? It's not the same characters. I was very disappointed. Why wouldn't they do the same characters? Because they wanted to do a different tech level. Okay. I suppose. Basically is what it is. Yeah, I I, exp- I thought it was going to be a League of Legends, all the heroes, but mm-hmm. as a shooter, and that's not what it is. Uh, it's still, by all accounts, very good. But yeah, he really enjoys that. He plays the, um, he plays the Apex Legends, which is frustrating to me because I love the campaign of Titanfall Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, it probably is my favorite FPS campaign of all time. Really, it might edge out wow. Halo Two. Okay. Um, as just Does the it edge best. out serious Sam. It edges out serious Sam. <laughs> um, and then we're but never going to get a Titanfall three because Apex Legends does way too well. Well, yeah, yeah. So. Their their big multiplayer thing mm-hmm. kind of took over. Yep. Okay. And I can blame Donald for that. My good friend Donald, director of Fortnite, for, <laughs> for you know everything is Fortnite now. Uh, mm-hmm. And so you know something was going to be fortnite if fortnite didn't become fortnite so it's hard to blame him too much but because everything is fortnite now except for dark souls which instead decided to become breath of the wild so i am very happy <laughs> with my dark souls breath of the wild it's going to take me forever to beat it i realized at my current uh speed because you know normal dark souls games you can beat them in 20 hours yeah i'm not going to beat this one in 20 hours let's just yeah. say that i um, we have talked, mm-hmm. dear viewer, about uh, forcing Dan to play Elden Ring. Yeah. Uh, either you just talking to him afterwards or mm-hmm. like watching him live. There's not a single aspect of that game that appeals to me. Not a molecule of it. And yet, 
And yet, that, that is that's what would make it a really that, that's great what would experience. make it interesting for yeah. all of you to watch Dan have to suffer through this game type he has never played and has no interest in. But how's that, Ben? Thank you.